hello and uh, welcome to this lecture uh, we're going to study uh, applications of derivatives in the previous uh, module we saw what a derivative is how to compute derivative the various rules for it and in this uh, module we'll start looking at uh, different applications uh, to focus our attention uh, let's look at uh, this notion of a function behavior right so the function itself might uh, you know have a different shape it may go up come down etc and there are these uh, critical points that you can you can visually see that the places where the function attains a peak or it reaches the bottommost point, the trough, so to speak, and what happens in between, right? Quite often you may be somewhere in the middle of the function and you may want to know whether or not uh, you're going towards a peak, you're going towards uh, you know a bottom point, or is it uh, is it or is it going to keep increasing forever? So you have to know all these things, right? So it's it's good to uh, figure out. Uh, how all these things are done and derivative plays an extremely important role in this kind of uh, you know assessing function behavior by evaluating its value and derivatives at a particular point. So, this is very important. Uh, so, these are the critical points and how to find critical points, how to identify critical points is important, how to know about growth or fall uh, between the critical points when you are, is it going to be increasing, decreasing, is it going to do something else. And importantly, trends, right? So you may want to predict whether or not the function is going to hit a peak or is going to hit a bottommost point and turn around. Things like that uh, can change, uh, you know, can can really improve your understanding of the function and uh, its use. Okay. So the first uh, application is to find uh, is to define and find what are called local maxima and local minima of a function. Okay. So this is an important thing. We'll define what a local maxima is, what a local minima is. And we'll look at how derivatives are used to compute uh, local maxima, local minima. Okay, so let me begin with uh, definition. But before the definition, let's figure out uh, intuitively what this local maxima, local minima mean. Uh, so if you go back to our uh, standard function example, uh, you can see that you know uh, the the there are uh, if, if you look at the critic uh, these points that are marked as x1, x2, x3, x4 uh, near x1 f of x is less than or equal to f of x1, right? So, near this, this is a peak. So, near it, it is uh, less than or equal to f of x1. If you go to x3, again near x3, f of x is uh, less than or equal to f of x3. So, this sort of is like a local maximum, right? Local, why local? Because, you know, if you look at x1, uh, here f of x1 may be like a local maximum only. Why do we say local and why not global? Because there is another point x3 here which is a local maximum, but it also appears to be a global maximum, right? So, overall for x, uh, this guy appears to be a maximum value. So, uh, local maxima is interesting. If you can find all the local maxima, then you can also find the global maxima, right? So, that's also nice to see, okay? So, likewise, analogously, x2 and x4 are local minima. Are these points, f of x, x2 and x4, uh, f of x is greater than or equal to f of x2. So, you see around x2, near x2, now the value of f of x is greater than or equal to f of x2, likewise at x4, okay. So, now uh, this near x2, near x1 is a little bit confusing, right. So, what, what is near x2 and near x1? Why do I say near? Uh, because if x2, x2 comes very, very close to x1, let us say, you know, you may have a function which falls very steeply. It rises, hits a peak and then falls very steeply or maybe as soon as it falls to a bottommost point, it may rise up. So, so, you know, this notion of nearness is a little confusing, right? It is not very precise. Uh, so, to define local minima, local maxima, uh, we will use a little uh, device here. This is, uh, this is like a delta uh, function that is used. Notice how the definition is made. It is made in a very precise way, uh, appealing to the small delta, okay? Look at this. A function f has a local maximum at x0 if there exists a delta greater than 0 such that f of x is less than or equal to f of x naught for x naught minus delta less than or equal to x less than or equal to x naught plus delta. So, by this delta, by using this delta which is positive but it can be very, very small, we are controlling the interval around x. So, we are defining what is near x naught, right? What is near x naught? All values of x which are between x naught minus delta and x naught plus delta. That is near x, near x naught, right? But why do I say there should be some delta greater than 0? This should be true, this could be true for any delta, right? Delta could be smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. As long as delta is non-zero, right? It could be 0 0.00001, 0 okay? It does not matter how small it is. As long as there is an interval around x, okay? 
where f of x is always less than or equal to f of x naught. f of x naught is greater than everything else in that small tiny interval, then we say x naught is a local maximum. Okay, so this takes care of this thing of how quickly it rises and falls and all that uncertainty, right? Even if it rises and falls over a very, very tiny interval, we call it a local maximum. Okay, the same device is used for local minimum. At x naught, we have a local minimum. If there is even a teeny weeny small little interval over which f of x is greater than or equal to f of x naught for f of x naught is the lowest point in that small interval, right? So, if that is true, then it becomes a local minimum. Okay. So, this uh, definition is the technically correct definition, but hopefully you understand what it is. Locally around x for a small even delta uh, interval, uh, you have a highest value or a lowest value. Okay. So, this is the definition. This definition is very intuitive and simple, but what is the connection between this and the derivative and all that? Okay. There, there is this wonderful, wonderful local maxima minima theorem, uh, which connects the derivative directly with the local maximum minimum. Okay. Supposing you have a function f which has a local maximum or minimum at x0, could be a local maximum or a minimum and let us say the derivative exists at x0. Okay. You remember the definition, definition of derivative, right? f prime is the limiting definition. So, that limit exists at x0. Okay. So, this f prime of x0 exists. Then it turns out this f prime of x0 has to be equal to 0. Okay. It cannot be anything non-zero. Of course, this f prime may not exist and in that case, uh, we, we are not going to say anything, but if f prime exists, then it has to be 0. Okay. So, what a wonderful and easy characterization of local maxima minima, right? How do you find local maxima minima? You are given a function, you differentiate it, equate it to 0, solve for all the points of x, you will get the local maxima and minima. You will get all the local maxima minima of a function. Okay. In one easy stroke, this simple theorem captures, uh, I cannot say simple, this elegant theorem captures. Uh, all the local maxima and minima of a function. Okay, So, here is a sort of a picture to illustrate why this is true. I have shown a local maxima here. So, you can see to the left of the local maxima, the function has to be increasing, right? It, it has to increase and then hit a peak and then it has to fall down. So, the slope here, notice has to be greater than 0. Only then it will be just increasing and then at the topmost point, the slope becomes equal to 0, right? So, if you have a local maxima, you imagine a line which is, you know, uh, the tangent line to the curve, it is just sort of, you know, going around, it, it will be, slope will be positive to the left of uh, the local maxima and then as you go up to the top, that line is going to go flat and then after it crosses, the line is going to go facing downwards. So, slope becomes negative. So, so this makes a lot of sense. It's, it says that slope should be equal to 0 at the maximum, but how do you clearly, clearly prove it? Uh, here is a proof. So, from this uh, module onwards, we will start seeing some proofs. Okay, So, we have come far along in the course, uh, you maybe you have gotten a bit comfortable. So, I will quickly walk you through some proofs, not very long winded proofs, proofs that are going to be very short and uh, simple, I will walk you through that so that you get an experience of how proofs look. Okay, So, how do you prove this theorem, the local maximum minima theorem? So, the proof, for the proof, I will assume x0 is a local maximum. Of course, x0 could be a local minimum also, I will leave that as an exercise to you. So, I will show you the proof for x0 being local maximum. And I will urge you to write down the proof when x0 is local minimum. Do the same thing, but how, it, how to modify it when x0 becomes a local minimum. We will see it is very analogous, but it is slightly different in some places. Okay? So, if it is a local maximum, then there is a delta. We know that there is a positive delta, so that for x around uh, x0 with a width of delta, x between x0 minus delta and x0 plus delta in this interval, f of x is always less than or equal to f of x0. Okay? So, notice for for some uh, with interval so, so some parts of this interval are less than x right this part x not minus delta less than x some parts of this interval are greater than x okay so that's a crucial little idea but for both sides f of x is less than or equal to f of x okay so this is where uh, we get this idea from so you take a t for to the left of x right to the left of x not i'm sorry so you take a t uh, that is to the left of x0. So, t is between x0 minus delta and x0. Now, if you look at f of t minus f of x0 divided by t minus x0, what happens? t minus x0 is negative, right? Because t is less than x0, so t minus x0 is negative. What about f of t minus f of x0? That is also negative. This is also less than or equal to 0. So, numerator is less than or equal to 0. 
denominator is less than 0, right. So, t minus x naught is negative, numerator is uh, less than or equal to 0, well, it is negative or it could be 0, okay. So, wh why is this negative? Because f of x is less than or equal to f of x naught in this range of x, right. If t falls between x naught minus delta and x naught, uh, this f of t is less than or equal to f of x naught. So, this quantity is less than or equal to 0. It cannot be positive, no. It has to be 0 or negative. t minus x naught is always negative. So, negative divided by negative is going to be positive or it could be 0. So, we say it is greater than or equal to 0. So, notice this logic here. So, notice how this ratio became positive for t falling in the range x naught minus delta to x naught. However, if you look at the other side, if t falls between x naught and x naught plus delta, the same ratio is going to be negative. Why is that? t minus x naught is positive, t minus x naught is positive, right, greater than 0. However, f of t minus f of x naught is again going to be less than or equal to 0. Do you see that? Because this f of x is always less than or equal to f of x naught in this interval. So, t falls in this interval on the right side, but it is still f of t is going to be less than or equal to this. So, numerator is negative, denominator is positive. So, you will get overall less than or equal to 0. So, now I can make t arbitrarily close to x naught from this side. I can also make t arbitrarily close to x naught from the other side, okay. Both sides, what has to happen? This ratio has to somehow become equal, no? But then on the one side, it is greater than or equal to 0 and the other side is less than or equal to 0. So, if I tend t to 0, I see the only way in which this can happen, right. So, we are saying, see, when t, t tends to 0, this becomes the derivative at x naught. Right, that also we see. When t tends to 0, this also has to become the derivative at x naught because derivative exists, right. So, f prime of x naught has to be greater than or equal to 0, f prime of x naught has to be less than or equal to 0. What number can be both greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 0? It has to be equal to 0, okay. So, that is the wonderfully crafted proof. This is like sort of proof writing skill. I just walked you through the proof very quickly. If you did not understand every step of the proof, it is ok. It is not uh, too big a deal in this course at least, but it is a little bit of an introduction uh, to mathematical deduction in a formal way, ok. Once again, uh, if you think you understood this logic, I will urge you to repeat it for x not being a local minimum. The proof is very analogous, but you will have to change some directions here and there, ok. So, anyway, let us come back to the main result. It is important to understand the main result and how to apply it much more than understanding how to prove it, at least in this class. So, you need to you need to know how to understand it, right. So, when f has, so function f is given to you, it may be an expression in x or it may be a graph. How do you identify points where it reaches a local minimum or maximum? Take the derivative, equate it to 0. Wherever the derivative is 0, those are the points where it could be local minima or local maxima, right. So, the proof goes, the result goes the other way, right. It says, if it is a local minimum or maxima, then f prime of x naught is 0, okay. If it is not a local minima or maxima, then, uh, you know, we can't say anything about f prime. It could be positive, negative, etc. Now, if f prime is, is 0, then it could be a local minima or maxima, okay. So, that is the way in which you have to interpret this result, <coughs> okay. Okay. Now, one of the problems uh, that I post when I introduce derivatives and I promise that eventually you will see how to solve this problem using derivatives was this cardboard box problem. You might remember this. You have a cardboard box A by B and then uh, you are cutting x by x squares on all four sides and you are sort of folding to make a box, okay. And A and B are given and we wanted to find out x which is going to maximize the volume of the box, right. You want the maximum volume. So, the volume of the box had this very simple formula and I had to maximize this over x, okay. What is going to be my strategy? I am going to differentiate this, this v of x with respect to x and equate it to 0. And if I differentiate it, I get this quadratic equation. You can check this derivative, this is very easy, you just multiply this out, you will get uh, x power 3 and then x squared and then x. If you differentiate it, you will get a b minus 4 into a plus b x plus 12, <coughs> 12 x squared equal to 0. You solve this, you know how to solve a quadratic equation, no? So, you solve the quadratic equation, you get two values for x uh, and then substitute the two values into this. You will see only one of them uh, will result in a proper thing and from there you can find out which is the maximum uh, maximizing x, okay? So, I am not showing you how to exactly do it. For particular numerical cases, uh, maybe there will be some questions in the assignments which you can quickly solve uh, by this differentiation. So, any maximization problem now, minimization problem now, you should be able to do given an expression in terms of uh, x for a function 
can differentiate it, equate to zero, solve for it. I mean, if you can't manually solve it, you have numerical tools, uh, computer programs today that will solve it for you and you can find maximum minimum values. You find all the local maximum minima, you can also find, uh, you know, the global maximum, right? You, you can evaluate it at the, all the local maxima, local minima, you can find the global maxima and the global minima, all right? So that's uh, the cardboard bo box example solved and we solved it using the uh, notions of uh, the local maxima minima theorem which, which connects the derivative to local maxima and minima, okay. Here's one more problem from the world of uh, electronic circuits or electrical circuits. Uh, here's a battery of 1 volt which is connected to 2 resistors in series, okay. The first resistor is 1 kilo ohm, second resistor is R kilo ohm, okay. So, this R is sort of unknown, we're going to solve for it and we're going to, we're going to try and maximize the power <coughs> that's going through R, okay. I'm going to pick R so that the power is uh, maximum. So, I mean, so quickly you, you should estimate that if, if R were to be 0, okay, if this were a uh, just a closed circuit, then you know there's no power, right, R is 0, there's no power. So, uh, so, so the power is 0, okay. And when, when R goes to infinity very large, okay, then, then also it's, it's an open circuit, there's no power here, right. So, power is 0 to 0 from 0 to infinity when R goes from 0 to infinity. So, something should happen in the middle and since power is maximum, you are expecting power to peak in the middle, okay. So, it's a reasonable thing to try and maximize power in the resistor, <coughs> okay. So, but you can use a very simple formula. So, the current through this uh, circuit, very simple circuit is 1 by 1 plus R, uh, well, uh, milliamps or something like that. And then the power is going to be 1 by 1 plus R whole squared times R, right, the power in R. Okay, it's a very easy circuit calculation and you get here R by 1 plus R whole square. And like I promised, if R is 0, you're going to get 0 here. If R is infinity, you can do the limit. You know how to do this limit, right? Limit as R tends to infinity, you will get once again 0 here because it will be R by R squared, it will go off to 0, okay? So, this is, uh, this is from 0 to 0 and uh, where does it receive, this achieve its maximum? You can try plotting it. If you try plotting it, it starts at 0 and then slowly, 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 slowly makes its way all the way to 0. Uh, so, from the graph, it's sort of maybe a little bit difficult to find out where the peak is, no? It's sort of spread out, it's coming out slowly like this. So, you don't know which exactly achieves the peak, okay. But on the other hand, if you differentiate, if you take the derivative here, P prime of R, uh, it's just you can use the quotient rule here, you can quickly uh, differentiate and then you can solve this and you'll get R equals 1. Okay, so this, this is a very easy thing to solve. Don't go and get, don't panic by how big it is. This uh, denominator will go on the right, multiply, it will go off to 0. This 1 plus r will also come out and you can cancel it. So, you will get just 1 plus r minus 2 r equals 0 and that's just, it will give you r equals 1. It's very easy, okay. So, the maximum power in the circuit in the resistor r happens when r is equal to this 1 kilo ohm. So, this is a classic result in uh, circuit theory and it comes from, uh, uh, the local maxima minima theorem, okay. So, that's a good uh, application as well. All right. So, that's the end of this uh, little lecture. Hopefully, uh, I mean, just to quickly summarize, uh, you, you, you got a, you got a glimpse of uh, how to look at local maxima minima, how to define it precisely in a mathematical term. There was this delta that came in and then uh, once you have that definition, how you can precisely connect the derivative going to zero to a, the local maxima or minima. And once you have that result, you're able to use it in practice in so many different scenarios and uh, you know to evaluate local maximum. Okay, thank you.